Today I decided to pop in to Toronto for a few hours to do some street and urban photography. This time I've got two cameras with me. I've got my favorite Leica Q2 Monochrome with the fixed 28 millimeter lens, which I, I love for this kind of photography, for street in particular, documentary. It's incredible. And also I've got my trusty workhorse, my Nikon Z6 with a 35 millimeter prime. And I thought I'd bring that as well as the Leica because the lens that I've got on it, the 35 millimeter, I haven't used it a lot. And I'm going on a big trip, very important trip in, a, in a, about a month. And I need to practice. I need to be, just spend more time using it and getting to know it. So as I'm walking, I'm thinking, wouldn't it be interesting to compare the two cameras? One is six years old, it's beaten up, falling apart. You can pick the Z6 up, used for next to nothing now. I wonder how it compares to my new latest Q Monochrome, the Q2M. So this is still available to buy new and it's expensive. Price difference is quite incredible, but is the quality, is it worth buying an expensive specialist camera like the Leica Q2 Monochrome? I think we should find out. I'm a big believer that gear doesn't matter. For general photography, and when I say general photography, I mean the sort of stuff that most of us do on a daily basis. Everything from portraits to travel, urban, street, landscape. The only exceptions are things like quick moving sporting events or wildlife photography where the subject's moving really quickly and newer cameras with their advanced autofocus eye tracking technology do, uh, do come in handy. Certainly in, in lieu of any learning any skills in, that, uh, in those genres. That sounded a bit, a bit rude. I should edit that out. So why on earth then, having said all of that, did I go and buy a Leica Q2 Monochrome? <laughs> the Q2 Monochrome is a very specialist piece of kit. It's a black and white sensor. You've got to be really dedicated with your black and white photography. Now, a monochrome sensor means it doesn't have color filters in front of it like regular color sensors do, which means there's more light getting in and the images that you're going to capture are crisper, sharper, cleaner, and you can extend your dynamic range uh, because of that which means you can shoot at higher ISOs and get a far cleaner image. And even when you do start to push the ISO, there's this quality to the sensor where it doesn't look like noise. It looks like film grain. It does to me anyway, and I love that. I'm now in Kensington Market, which is the most popular place in Toronto for street photography. The last time I was here, I think it was end of September. And what I've noticed this time, even though it's cold and, and wintry here, it's certainly far from tourist season, there are more people walking around with cameras doing street photography than there are people without cameras, which, yeah, it's become a little bit oversaturated now. And interestingly, I've already seen two people walk around, guys in their 20s, walk around with old Hasselblad film cameras. And I've never seen that before. So that's interesting. That seems to be the new trend. We've gone from the, the range finders, the Leicas, and now we're, we're shooting medium format Hasselblads. I predict the next trend will be Kodak box brownies from 1920s and 1930s. There you go, you heard it here first. The trickiest type of photograph to take with any camera is a scene where you've got bright sunlight and then dark shadows, big contrast in, in uh, tonal range, dynamic range. 
I found a very, very contrasty scene here that will be the perfect test for these two cameras to see how they handle the dynamic range and to see if this amazing sensor on the monochrome is that much better for this sort of situation. You would think it would be, and this is a good test, so let's have a look. in and out it was just too warm and it's cold out here so that's not good for the cameras I'm just not getting into my photography today. I think it's because I forgot my gloves and it's minus seven. So holding metal cameras for too long just starts to freeze the fingers and it's very painful. I think I'm gonna jump to future me now and review those images that I have taken and see how these cameras compare. Future me here with warm fingers. I've had a good look at the photos taken on both cameras and the results are very interesting. But I'll keep this brief because I find tech stuff and reviews boring. Looking at most of the images shot, there's really no difference in quality. It's worth noting the Leica Q2M has a 48 megapixel sensor and the Nikon Z8 a 24 megapixel sensor. Although that makes little difference really so Maybe it's not worth mentioning. I've had images taken on this little Z6 published in magazines on double page spreads and large posters. Pixels are overrated. It's also worth mentioning the Leica has a German made Sumalux lens on it. One of the best and most expensive lenses in the world. It doesn't get any better than this. I have a cheap Chinese lens on the Z6 that cost about $370. There were a few shots with very, very dark shadow areas where the Q2M did do a better job, but the same results can still be achieved on my Z6. On this very bright midday scene, I was exposing for the brightest parts of the image. So in situations like this, the shadow areas look solid. There's no detail. This was shot on the Leica, and when I brought up the shadows, the details were revealed. With the Nikon, I still got similar results, but I had to make an additional 
overexposed version of the image in Camera Raw and do a little bit of blending in Photoshop. Now I've been using Photoshop for many years and I can do things like that very quickly. For some people, it's a pain. There's nothing wrong with not having any details in your shadow areas. It's a creative decision. It all depends on the, the end result that you're looking for. Sometimes having too much dynamic range, too many tones can look busy and pretty terrible. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. So you can get the same or similar results with a cheap old camera, certainly one that's within five or six years old, as you can with a top of the range new model. I stand by what I've always said, for most photography situations, gear does not matter. I think we spend too much time pixel peeping and comparing gear when it's our creative vision we should be really looking into and improving. So the answer to my earlier question. So why on earth then, having said all of that, did I go and buy a Leica Q2 Monochrome? <laughs> Was it worth buying this expensive camera? Absolutely yes. I knew buying this camera wouldn't make me a better photographer or improve what I'm doing. I bought this because it's, a, it, it's like an old film camera, it's nostalgic. It makes me feel good to hold it and to use it. There are very few buttons and computer nonsense to get in the way. You can use this thing entirely in manual mode, including zone focusing, which is something that you can't really do on modern cameras and or certainly modern lenses because they don't have the, the, the distance scale on the lens barrel. So with this, I can set it to manual focus and not have to think about it. All I need to do is just pick this thing up and figure out how I want to compose my shot and shoot. I only really need to change the shutter speed and aperture and adjust my focus and that's it. Just like this old film camera, they're very, very similar in the way they feel and uh, the way you use them. Because of that, this is far more useful for things like street photography and travel photography, I think. It just feels so good to hold because it oozes quality. The German craftsmanship and, and quality of materials is a huge and welcome contrast to these cheap plastic Chinese cameras that aren't built to last. I take this camera everywhere with me at every opportunity. I really do love using it. So maybe gear does matter. <laughs>